Hello and welcome to the Mastermind Body and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. Today's guests are the founders of Boho Beautiful, a travel, yoga, and lifestyle brand creating positive content for the body, mind, and earth. With content centered around yoga, travel, fitness, vegan food, self-awareness, conscious living, and guided meditations, Boho Beautiful has grown to over 1.6 million subscribers on YouTube, 300,000 followers on Instagram, sold tens of thousands of books and programs online, and inspired and has been inspired by so many wonderful people from all over the planet. Welcome to the show, Juliana and Mark Spickleluck. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. It's awesome to be here. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are listening to this only, you guys are in a van, and that made me very excited to see. You're living, you're living the dream. Um, you're in Canada, but you're doing amazing work. I got to scroll through some of the things that you're doing, and uh, it's truly inspiring. Um, why don't you tell us, because you guys are also young, so why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourselves and how you got into what you're doing, and then how you made it sustainable, how you were able to grow it, keep traveling, and doing what you're doing. Oh, Wow. That's a lot of questions or a lot to say. In one <laughs> um, yeah, start us off, Juliana. Well, we, I mean, we started as just being, you know, two people living in Toronto at that time. Um, fellow Canadians. Fellow Canadians live in the rat race type of life and really feeling um, whole in our soul and our hearts felt like we weren't contributing in the way that we wish we could contribute to the world. And at the time, we always wanted to create videos online and to share um, yoga, meditation, fitness, and just mindfulness in general to a larger audience than, you know, for example, I was a yoga teacher teaching all over the different studios in Toronto. And, you know, you have 30 people, which is great. But if you can impact a larger amount of people, that's always been a dream of ours. And so we just... So it's just this feeling of mm -hmm. being um, in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people in this day and age, especially with the world spinning in the way and the direction and with the intensity that it has been for the last, I don't know, it just seems to pick up sort of speed and momentum as it's going. And it's just getting to this point where it feels like it's almost comical when you open the news and when you mm -hmm. look at what the real world is thinking about. Um, and I think we just really felt like misplaced and almost like we'd been misguided for our whole lives. Yeah. Um, and like we were just on this, we called it a carousel, like every year would kind of just start and you'd hit Christmas and then you would hit this and then you would hit these milestones these flagships and all you do is kind of do the same thing over and over and you realize like well what's the point of all of this you know so there's this deep yearning for something something more something more and and and, and yeah. I think the video thing was just something we always talked about and you know like many things that I think a lot of people when they come up with ideas of how to save themselves from situations that they're not happy with there seems to be a lot of talk um, and a lot of, you know, like thinking about it and wishing and dreaming, but there's, but the, the resistance inside of us Always tends wins. to outweigh mm -hmm. um, action and actually doing it. And, and I think the pivotal moment for us was just realizing, well, I don't even know what, what it was that triggered it, but there was just a grand realization to just press record and finally mm -hmm. fucking do it. Yeah. And, and then that kind of was the beginning of everything, was just literally pressing record. I'd never shot a video in my life. Juliana had never, you know, been a teacher to, on that kind of format before. <laughs> We'd never yeah. edited anything. We'd never, like, nothing. Like, we just said, you know what? Like, other people can do it. Let's, so let's we have that. to be able to figure it out. So that was kind of the first step for us to enter this world of online digital yoga and it was, wellness sharing. And, and it, yeah. it was more of a purpose, I think, than departing mm -hmm. but i think that the physical departure from toronto it it it's almost undeniable once you start to depart the, the psyche of toronto once you start to sort of transcend where you live in that space not where you live physically but yourself and your mental being and your emotional being and once you start to ascend beyond the the mediocrity that is acceptable for those kinds of lives that we lived i think that like then became this very apparent yearning to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we changed our life for that, you know, the sacrifices we made in our life in order to give ourselves the opportunity to have that window to jump. You know, we always say like you kind of jump off the cliff and you don't know where you land, but you know you want to do it because otherwise we couldn't stand with the idea of 20, 30 years going by and then us wishing that we did something that 
time. And so that was kind of our, our big first step. And was, was to just start and, and, and it was, there's no expectation. I think that's really yeah. important when you're doing these kinds of things. Especially, I think, just to add to the expectation part, Mark is saying with YouTube or anything that you do online, I think a lot of people, everybody wants to share because everyone has so much to give in this world. But it's so discouraging for so many people starting out is like when you create a video and you know you have this expectation oh i'm going to get this many views or likes and then when you don't it is such a downer and it demotivates people on a huge level and so i think setting your expectation when you're creating something and sharing something with the world that is beyond the result result is yeah. very important and it's more about the intention and the energy that you want to wish to serve and to share with the world that's something that's going to keep pushing you through those difficult moments when you begin the really hard start yeah and i think mm -hmm. going into that i think we've done a lot of creative projects in our past nothing to this extent or of this kind of ilk but i think one of the keys to us was understanding and I remember the day we were publishing our first video, we looked at each other and we said, no matter what happens, we're just going to, we're, we have to ground ourselves and stay to the intention of why we did it and not let, which is always a push and a pull. Whenever you do anything that you expose to the world, the result um, affects the process. Because to us, it was, it was about having a deeper purpose more than where it could take us. And it's taken us way further than we could have ever dreamed. But I think that the the only reason that it has and that it actually paid off in that respect is because we're still to this day, like we continue to just be like, it, it's not about numbers. Like so many people do this shit and it's about fame or numbers or notoriety or, or, being, money. or money or whatever it might be. But for us, it's just literally been about like the minute that comes into play, our art suffers, like what we do suffers. And we've seen it because it's a, like it's literally a magnetic pull. As soon as you put something on internet and you get traction, you're like, oh, what if I could get it again? It's like this evil sauce that just wants to get, get take another taste, you know? Like, and so I think we really, like we, you have to be, it's incredibly a disciplined practice that we fail at often, and but always are able to rectify and come back to just the original tension, which was what allowed us to live in Toronto for a few years doing it. Mm -hmm. And slowly watch the growth happen until it got to a point where we were like, well, we barely have enough to sustain if we leave, but that's the best time because then you're burning your boats. Like if you want to take the island, you know, the expression, what do you do? You burn your boats, send the soldiers on, burn the boats. There's no coming back. You take the island or you die. And I think that's really kind of what we did. And we when did. we sold everything we owned at that time in Toronto and just got into a van that this we're van, in actually. right now. I can't believe it's the same um, van. At that time, it wasn't converted. It was just a van. We <laughs> filed everything that we had to our names and just drove off. And the first place we went to was a little cabin off the grid um, in Invermere, BC, in the mountains in the middle of winter froze our asses off because it was like the coldest winter oh, BC yeah, experience crazy. minus 40 and that was kind of the first step in this disconnection from the life that we were earning to disconnect ourselves from mm -hmm. you know that was kind of like the big first step for us and then the growth began even further and deeper and then we um we left the van here and just went on the road and went out to Southeast Asia and kind of the travels took us where our hearts led. And we, yeah, we went yeah, with no plan. No plans. And we just created content and shared our experiences um, in a raw format through a lot of the videos that we do on our YouTube channel called Boho Diaries, where um, we just, you know, it was a lot of like confessional, but also showing our experiences of the travel and but well, we kind of framed it in a way which was just authentic to what we were doing rather than being like, we're travel bloggers, like so many travel bloggers, like, isn't like great, look, I'm in a mansion or whatever, like all that kind of stuff. We were just like, no, we're two people that are really confused about the purpose of life. And we know there's more than this little shallow plastic existence that we've been exposed to for so long. And we're going to go out and we're going to painstakingly like explore it and find the value that we need to, to grow as human beings, hopefully. Yeah. And through, you know, and by actually saying ideas that are difficult to say because it's exposing, you know, the, the untruth of what most social media is, which is like showing your best self. We showed so a lot of our worst self or a lot of our apprehensions, a lot of our anxieties. And yeah. people, I think, really, it, it gave a human side to what we were doing on the other side, which was class-based content. We weren't just people creating yoga videos. We were real people that mm -hmm. people could relate to. And we get these crazy 
emails from all like people in similar situations all over the world just connecting to that energy and we're like the more that we allowed ourselves to be vulnerable i think the more people connected to that because the, the right people connected yeah. to it we it turned a lot of people off we knew that like not everyone wants to see this kind of stuff or this kind of content but we realized like it felt right and we yeah. just wanted to follow like that that force of, of like inside you that's just telling you like the truth yeah sharing share the your truth, truth because there's not a lot of truth truth shared yeah there's not a lot of truth online Um, so that's you know that's kind of where our journey took us and we are here today continuing on similar path continuing to constantly grow and evolve ourselves but we just never stopped yeah and and i think that that was that's part of like i think when we juliana was touching on earlier about the expectation and, and that kind of thing like our expectation when we started was to just never stop and so if that was our expectation we met it because youtube's a treadmill terrible treadmill you know whether it's sunny out or whether you're feeling like shit or whatever it might be you have to post another video or you lose the momentum like the it's algorithm. like the algorithm <laughs> is your god like it's fun, crazy so like you end up just playing this game and it, as long as you see it as a game don't take it too seriously you just do it and you like and it's a beautiful thing on the other side it may be a m- massive multinational corporation like basically like doing all kinds of terrible things in the world but we're using it for some good And it's connecting strangers that would have never been connected because of ideas we had and we just pressed buttons. And like, that's a miracle in itself that the existence of humanity can, can do that kind of thing where like, you know, yesterday we get an email from someone in, I don't know, Vietnam that was like, Oh, you changed my husband's life and did it. Alice. And you're like, what the, that's awesome. Like what? Like, how does that, how's that pop? Like it's cool. So I don't know. We never expected any of it, and it's all a blessing. We've never felt so fortunate and so blessed in our life. That's a long-winded answer. To <laughs> I didn't even know what that was anymore. So just, yeah, we how, just started ranting. This is kind of how, how our journey has begun, and this is where we're at, I guess. That's a short <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I love of- it. I, I'm glad you guys shared that, because when, you, when you've when laid it out, it, it makes perfect sense to me why you're successful. Number one, you didn't do it for yourself like um, in the way that you weren't thinking about what I can get. You were thinking, what can I give back to the world? We know we can make an impact. But also the, um, the life you were living, you knew you had to change it. And so you didn't have expectations. And you then started putting in the work and then just let it be what it was. Because I equate it to when I was teaching snowboard lessons in Whistler, a lot of people wanted to go pro. And I would just try to explain to them that if, uh, what do you want? And they would say, I want to snowboard every day. I was like, you can do that in many ways and not necessarily need to be a pro. It's like one idea, right? And so I think nowadays people want to be digital nomads or YouTubers. They, it is about them. It's not about what they can give back. It's not about what they're learning. It's, it's, you, have to, you have to think about what you're giving. And if you're thinking selfishly, it's a lot harder to be successful. And if you can do it without expectation, you're going to be happier either way, regardless of the result right? It's not your happiness isn't dependent on the result. And if the result is awesome, then that's great. It's just, um, you know, it's a bonus for being in these places, having these experiences, honoring your own integrity. And so I think you're right when you say that so many people, they have this impulse to do something different, something more authentic, you said vulnerable, and I think vulnerable leads in with authentic. And we make all these compromises over and over. And the example I'd like to say is that we're not testing what we're capable of. You know, yeah. we're not nearly testing what we are capable of doing here. And it's going to take a leap of faith, but it also has to be something that's meaningful to you. And so the question I'd pose to you guys is how do you, how would you suggest somebody if they're living a life and they're like, you know what, I need to transition. I might not know what it is yet, um, but I want to start moving in that direction because it, it could be digital nomad. It could be a different business. It could be anything. The thing is just taking the leap towards what inspires you. And then the second part of that would be, now let's just start with the first part and then we'll go back to the second part. That's a really good question. And I think like, I think what's interesting about it is a lot of people look at our life and they assume that it just kind of transpired and we were lucky. Like there's a lot of like, there's a lot of weird misplaced jealousy because what they see isn't always what it is. You know, you see a video for 50 minutes, um, you don't see the four days that it took to create it and like 14 hours a day. You know what I mean? I know know it's four days, but I'm still jealous, man. I got like 17K, I think. I've been plugging away. This is incredible to me. 
but yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but yeah, the, the haters are real, man. It's so, no, and, and so I think <laughs> what's really important, I think, with that is is to understand that it, it's just about it. I believe it's what you put in. It like it's what do you like? I forget what the original question was well, now. The but, original question was like, how do you help somebody find? Is it about finding that, it, or how do they do once purpose. they find it? Well, Maybe. it's kind of both because you guys, you guys, you did it. It's, you did it seamlessly. Like you know, this would say is about episode four hundred of interviewing people and how they transition. And you hit every element of that. Like you feel a little bit of angst. You figure out who you are, but you also figure out how you want to contribute. And you said it at the beginning. You thought about giving back. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and you can't fake that. And so many, you would see this out in the digital nomad world, right? You'd see these people from traveling, and they, they want to do different things. But you can tell it's a very selfish aim. But if you can think about how you can help, how you can give back, and that's what you're doing, you're going to get a much better result. But I think you're going to be happier in the process. But it's hard for people to make that leap because they don't have the faith. And you had to, and then you also took the leap of faith. You started working at it in Toronto, and then you burned the boat. And so that's that's monumental for it breaks people's brains. And I guess I'm um, wondering if you can help people that are considering it and say, no, these guys did it. Maybe I'm going to do it in a different way. But it's always okay. I always feel like the matrix will always take you back. If you, if you oh, burn the boat, always, always. Yeah. that's the trick. I think it, <laughs> it will always take you back. It needs another soldier. It needs all the soldier, all the yeah. submission it can get. It will always accept. So even when you build your boat, had we gone out and it had just fucking tanked, we could have come back and, and just plugged same. right back in and would nothing would have never missed a beat almost like what no one's gonna like you're not gonna come back and starve maybe some people might but i think we're resilient mm -hmm. enough to figure out like how to make ends meet exactly. so it's like it's interesting but, but, but i do ahead. believe on the idea of like what you're saying is about serving right is asking yourself like how can i serve i remember um beginning of my journey what my first yoga teacher said every morning she would meditate and she would literally meditate on a mantra of just how can i serve like if she didn't know a purpose or a direction it's almost like you were asking for the universe to download um a direction for you so all she would do is just how can i serve how can i serve she would just meditate on that and the right path would come to her and i think it's that's a beautiful and powerful mantra to think about because each and every one of us is able to serve one way or another it doesn't matter what your passion is and maybe the first step for people is to truly think about what lights their heart on fire, right? Like what is their true passion for? For me personally, it's always been yoga or teaching or sharing an energy that I feel within myself and helping others find that within themselves through also moving their bodies and exploring their bodies and their minds. To me, that's my personal passion, but to others, it could be painting, it could be podcasts, it could be dancing, singing, whatever it is. And a really cool, I remember um, a really cool um, a saying I heard once by Alan Watts, and it was like a whole speech about it. And it was about if money wasn't an option, like if you had all the money in the world right now, what would you do? What would you put your time into right now? And that's a really interesting concept to think about because well, the, we're driven by money, we're driven by comfort and security, and it's really scary for people to step away from that because of, well, how am I going to pay my bills? I have a mortgage, I have a fear, family, yeah. it's the fear, right? So to take a second and just to play with that idea, it's like, what if you had all the money in the world and that was never an issue? What would you actually put your energy into? And, and mm -hmm. the second half of that is, that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's that's your first indication of figuring out then how to take what your answer is. And watching Netflix and sitting on the couch doesn't count. It has mm -hmm. to be productive. Like it, like when you ask yourself that question, it's not about like some kind of like you know self fulfilling and like endless entertainment. Yeah. It has to be of like something that you had to do. And I think that's what you should be doing, or that's your first indication to then figure out how do I, if it's not using that to serve, then how do I create value for others through that, which is in itself serving. So yeah. if you can create value, um, and sometimes it is just entertaining people, it's a lot harder to entertain because it's so subjective and there's so much out there, but if that's what it is, then that's what it is. And you have to use, like take that frequency in yourself and figure out how to amplify it, figure out mm -hmm. how to position it so that so that others can find the value you have to yeah. offer. And the really beautiful thing about it all is that once your true intention with everything you're doing is to serve and to help 
others or the planet or the animals, whatever it is, it's almost like you are raising your own vibration and frequency and that resonates with a different universal frequency, which then rewards you with everything oh, that the universe you gets out of the way. It, it gets out of the way to a point where like just things align and they start to work crazy out. things start to happen. And that happened to us so many times I remember because there were moments when you know we were doing things and you kind of like freak out and you're like, well I don't know like if this doesn't work I don't have enough money I'll be broke I don't know how we'll survive and you know all those fearful thoughts come in and it's it's that um, time when you just take a step back and surrender to the idea that if you just continue to stick to your craft and continue to always live with the right intention to serve in any way that you can somehow the universe will figure it out and i know it's such a hippie way to look at it like the universe will take care of you but when you truly believe it in your heart it does yeah. like things just align in a magical way you know it's and it, it can only, the result of it can only be recognized and, and experienced when you, that skepticism that you all have when you first hear that idea, mm -hmm. as soon as you move, remove that and replace it with just, with a trust. And then all of a sudden things like the strangest things will always happen. And in my life, over times when I've been focused on the wrong things, strange things that benefit me never happen. And like, it, and it was very clear. And like, when I lived the low frequency life, like nothing was ever going right. Like everything was difficult. My life was filled with fear and anxiety and like all kinds of treacherous, like human experiences. Um, but the minute that you replace your low frequency with something of high, like that's when things start to happen. Like it's, it's an amazing thing. And I think that when, when I speak of high frequency, I think the second component to that is just, once you answer that question, like Julian is saying, whatever that is that you should be doing, if you had all the money in the world, it's just doing that for the sake of doing that and doing it nonstop and like perfecting your craft, perfecting and making mm -hmm. it part of who you are because that's the gift that you were given. That's the whisper in your soul that tells you, you like if you, when you're working in the bank and every day you get up and there's that whisper you want to deny and you never want to listen to it and you go to bed at night and it's still there or whenever it rears its head maybe it's once a week once a year however it is and it's always there that's the thing you should be listening to because that's your essence and should you submit and completely just like be allow that to become a part of who you are and embrace it um then maybe you have to work at the bank for a little longer while you're embracing it and figuring it out. But that's the, it's those steps that transition to get to when you're, you're able to do it in a safe way. You should always do it safe. You never want to just burn your boats in tomorrow and go in and quit. You could, that works for some people. I'm more risk averse. We <laughs> managed our YouTube channel like for a year and a half or two years in Toronto where I had a job, she had many jobs. We were doing our usual life to pay our usual bills but we made sacrifices, meaning we looked at our minutes in our day and we said, how do we maximize the amount of minutes that we can put towards what we love to get it to a point where that's what we, where what we love is what we get to do. Mm -hmm. And so we literally cut off everything in our life, whether it was seeing friends going out and like doing, like going to parties or bars or socializing in any way, um, like minutes, like I don't know, watching television or movies. I used to play a lot of video games, like all kinds of things. And we just cut them all off and replace those minutes. We play the game of minutes. We played it with working on what we want to be doing. Mm -hmm. So every weekend, we knew what we were going to be doing that weekend. We were going to spend every waking hour working on what we love to do. And hopefully one day with the faith, knowing that maybe it'll pay off, maybe it won't, but it's also, it's the pursuit of it is also a very rewarding thing too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It, it's, it's about hard work. I think that's something people always have to remember. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to follow my passion and everything's just going to fall into place. Oh, it's it took like two years for us to get you to You have to also be prepared to put everything, your blood, sweat, and tears into something that you feel so extremely passionate about. And that, you know, that comes with hard work. Otherwise, everybody would be doing everything they love if it was easy, right? Like, but for so, this, and also for the sake of just finding out, well, what happens if I do it this much? What if I put all this in? energy into it like like that Jim Rohn thing like why like why not like why would you do that well why wouldn't I do that how big can it get how how many people can I reach how how massive can we build something how beautiful can it be like why not we're only here for a minute so like there's no reason not to if you look at it from a positive perspective and so I think that was really important to us is that complete just like commitment 
Um, and then just being like, I don't know, not expecting a damn thing from it. And then the things that came were just like, they were, everything was a miracle. And once you start receiving miracles, then life's really nice because all of a sudden, like, and I don't mean a miracle, like the first hundred subscribers on our channel was a miracle. <laughs> like, as far as cool. we are concerned, it took us months. <laughs> yeah. Like a video after video after video after, and you're just like, like we got a hundred, yeah. like, and you're just like, this a miracle because four months before that, we had zero. It yeah. didn't even exist. And now a hundred people are watching it. And that to us was like, the biggest celebration yeah, in the world a milestone too. and and just recognizing that and be like that's what happens the universe starts to get out of the way and it's it's i don't know it's a beautiful thing it really is I don't know that was that amazing question. no that's amazing yeah that, i agree with everything that you said it was kind of a master class and i like how you dispelled a lot of myths in that right and again you're talking about hard work and how to transition you know i went through another one of stephen kotler's courses he does a lot of work on flow state and peak performance. And one of the things he'll say is like, okay, if you want to transition to a life you prefer, you know, just put 10% in, you know, anyway, as little as 4% a day or a week or as up to 20 and, and start to um, even do more if you can. And as you have to sacrifice to do those things and you have to have the authenticity and the commitment, like you said, to continue, because if it doesn't, if the will of your creation of what you want to create isn't strong enough to overcome the obstacles that will come, and you were expecting something, you're definitely going to fail 100%. And so if you, if you flip it and you figure out who am I, what do I want to give, this inspires me, I'm willing to master this craft, it's going to take some time, just like an artist or a musician. Your first song is, might not be the best song you've ever written, right? But your thousandth thousand song might be. And so um, I'm reminded too as well, you, you brought up a great point. A lot of people want to make income from being a digital nomad. And I did too. I, I remember being 18 and I'm like, I want to travel. Um, and I figure if I can make two grand a month online, I could be anywhere in the world. And so, you know, I started looking up, you know, how to make money online. And so, but what I began to do was problem solve how I could be in the places that I wanted to be. And then I wanted to snowboard a hundred, yeah, as much as I wanted. And so in, that became my aim. And so I was working around how I would make that possible because if I were doing that thing that made me happy, like Alan Watts said, what would you do? Um, you know, if money were no object, well, I go snowboarding. And so that became the thing I problem solved, right? And everybody in Whistler in those mountain towns problem solves it. And you know, from meeting probably hundreds or thousands of people that everybody's problem solving it in a, their own unique way to go and explore and the ones doing it authentically, the ones really happy and enjoy, um, they just really figured out where they wanted to go and what they wanted to do. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to say was, yeah, my friend Josh is super successful. The guy is worth all of the money. And uh, like, and I, I'm, he mentored me a little bit and he goes, I just wake up every day and think about how I can provide value. He's the nicest guy. He's got a family, you know, he, he does family stuff, but that's his main goal. And he's honest and he's genuine and he has perfected his craft and what he offers over years and takes great feedback and then makes it better. Like a hundred percent genuine commitment to the craft. And I feel like that's essential. There's no, we want the quick and easy way, right? Somebody was actually starting a YouTube channel. They said, uh, Hey Matt, how do you get subscribers? Like, I don't know. I don't have that many. I was like, just do a lot of, do a lot of videos. He's like, is that it? I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, <though. laughs> The right people will connect to them. As long as there's and, value in it. Yeah. Like some kind of, like, that's all, it's such a magical time that it is. Just stick to it, do it more than the other guy, and your stuff will pop up more. And if there's value, people will find, we'll connect to they'll it. connect to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, I don't know. It's a miraculous thing. And it's very simple, but it's very difficult, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Like, the, yeah. the, the principles are the simplest principles. Like, they are taught almost as a kid, but not necessarily driven home as a kid. Like, hard work, you know, persistency. Um, following your dreams. Everyone tells kids to follow their dreams. And then sometime when you're a teenager, you're told to like pick a career and just wander off into the fucking forest. So I don't get that. But like, you know what I mean? Like it's literally a lot of, of, of these principles. Like we forgot as we were conditioned again, like you were saying, to be plugged into the matrix. They kind of try to take these things that we, we enlighten all our kids with like, you know, we feel so great teaching our children about all these wonderful simple principles. But then you tell them, oh, well, now you got to grow up. But again, like those simple principles are rooted in a lot of the, the simplicity that it takes to just build a YouTube channel and to not expect to have to pay your bills from it. And then eventually somehow you pay your bills from it. Just have mm -hmm. fun with it. Like be it, you know, find that inner child in yourself and, and, and find joy in just mm -hmm. being creative and sharing and connecting. And 
like it's amazing i don't know well one of the things you guys keep bringing up too is is the sacrifice like what you have to sacrifice to do it and not expecting if you study law of attraction they'll say that um and i equate it to uh, teaching extreme sports athletes how to do really difficult tricks like there's a there's a will to get it done but once you once you've left the lip of the jump, it's like the surrender faith moment. You know what I mean? All of your energy and intention and everything is going in. Then you're off the lip. And then you're kind of like you're participating, but it's already been done, you know? And if you can participate at the highest level of will all the time, you're operating at such a higher level, a higher level of integrity, but it's, it takes sacrifice and it's really hard. You have to let go of all this certainty quote unquote and security right and that's the hardest thing for people to let go of and you guys remind me a little bit of the book into the wild you guys are familiar with that right yeah and that's i wanted to say before too you guys are like you know going down the rabbit hole giving hippie advice in a van and that's why you know it's legit and you need to listen because you've got like a velour blanket behind you it's just magical but you know it's like it's literally my been my dream forever but the thing is what i want to ask is you know, what are the most important lessons you've lived about or learned about life? Because one of the ideas I think that is really dangerous is that we're going to live forever. So many people just think we're going to live forever and we're going to have this unlimited time. And then we're 60, we're going to retire. But for me, life is a lot more than that. You know, what do we want to experience? How do we want to explore? And it takes a whole nother frame of mind to do that. So what have you got? What are some of the most important lessons you guys have learned along the way of just living this type of lifestyle, communicating with different people and really pursuing the things that made you curious and what you wanted to explore and what you wanted to experience in life? You're good at the huge questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. You know, the whole thing about, um, you know, the realization that we're not going to live forever because I think that was a huge moment for us I can't remember when that happened but you know I think we were sitting there and you're planning out maybe it was like the beginning of the year and you're writing out your goals and things you want to achieve and of course the first thing that pops in your head is like fear it's like well am I crazy to dream that this could be like I'm capable of achieving this or is this too high of a goal and I remember um, thinking about the story it was like well imagine if right now so you saw your doctor and they said you have a year to live like literally like you have cancer god forbid you know and you have one year to live what would you do differently about your life and that question to me really really stroked me because i'm like well why do we need to wait until something terrible happens to us like cancer to actually really think about how we want to live our life and the goals we want to achieve and the things we want to go after um, outside of the fearful negative thoughts that might be blocking us, you know, as the obstacles. And that idea right there was a huge lesson to always come back to for us. We because, try to keep coming back to that. Actually. Yeah, because anytime you feel like, you know, life is too difficult or there's too much going on, I can't achieve these things. It's like, well, what if I had a year to live? What would I do differently? And so thinking about that with that, but still being healthy and knowing that, well, maybe I'll have two, maybe I'll have 10, maybe I'll have 80, <laughs> who knows? Um, but, but living with that idea every single day is something um, that's really powerful, I think, for us and always keeps us in line and in check to make sure that we're pushing to that limit, as we were talking about earlier, is that we're all capable of living at a very high frequency, but we're just too scared to go there because we're too afraid to fail. We're too afraid to not mm -hmm. get to those goals that we set out for ourselves. But I feel like if you thought about your life could end in a year or your life was going to end it in could, a year, then you're going to lose that like fear, fearless. It's, and it's, uh, it's to understand almost the reality yeah. of the idea that it could end tomorrow. And like it's, it, this pandemic could have easily been like one molecule different and it could have been like a zombie disease and we could all be dead right now. Like it literally that simple, like and everyone's like, oh, it'll never happen. You know, just like when it was starting, and everyone's like, oh, it's never going to, this isn't real, da, 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 whatever, all the things that come up. But it's like, no, it, like it was close. It's the closest we've ever been, but like we could all be dead right now. Um, that we could have gotten a van accident on the way. Like there's so many stupid little things in life that we take for granted every day that m allow us to forget the idea that it could all be gone in an instant. And I think that partly maybe through traveling and maybe through connecting with a deeper sense of empathy, I think like really exercising our empathy, um, 
and our compassion at, on the other hand towards all of the different characters and creatures that we've um, interacted with on our on our journey yes. has helped us sort of understand sorry our dog is behind the camera <laughs> or the, the laptop and he's keeps kicking it is that what the panting was that's so funny <laughs> i was curious what that was that is hilarious oh and you oh nice and you have a dog man you, yeah i'll i'll be i'll be getting there soon that's definitely the dream it's on the board it's it's in the mission and now i'll have like a little daughter too um you know coming along for the ride so that's amazing and so what do you guys do what do you guys do with the dog when you travel the parents or something well, yeah, my mom looks after our dog when we can't take him with us, but when we're in Canada, and even actually when we traveled through America, he was in the van with us. Yeah, so, oh, awesome. Never yeah. leaves her side. But, you know, obviously, he's a big boy. We can't really take him on <laughs> the plane. But, um, uh, but so anyway, funny. Yeah. But back to the, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think just to recap it is just the idea of living with the fact that we have no idea how much time we actually have on this earth and, and, and if you can see your, I think what I was getting to is if you can see yourself in others in the old in the like in the sick in the suffering you understand a little easier that that it just that is you in a way in a universal oneness way like there's a deeper connection to that but there's also a deeper connection and understanding that that will also be you one way like our our path is suffering from a mm -hmm. like if you look at it from the buddhist perspective perspective like life is suffering mm -hmm. and that like it's undeniable that since the minute you wake in this small infantile body and you're screaming and crying and terrorized because you have no idea what's going on until you know you understand loss and and all the the negative things that we call negative but is suffering it doesn't have to be negative because it's the human experience and i think as you as you get as you become more aware of that in yourself that you see in everyone else then you learn to appreciate the moment of now and the day that we're in and i think that's been like probably one of the more valuable perspectives that we've been blessed to to start to come closer to mm -hmm. which has forced us to come back to it over and over again when you lose it because perspectives in the, this noisy time and in this noisy culture um with so much distraction and so much trying to to, to actually control what we're thinking about it's so easy for that to be lost and to go back to where we've been conditioned which is we're gonna live forever because we always end up thinking that again and then you're like no hang on what if it all ends like what do we want like what it's if today's the last day very, how can we act very today? humbling to it, think about that and it's hard yeah it's a hard thing to to to, to stay fixed to so mm. but we realize the longer we can fix ourselves to it and remind ourselves about it and stay in that main frame of mind we live a much more appreciative and high quality existence with a deep sense mm -hmm. of gratitude and grounding. And it's, it's helped us, I think, in everything. Yeah. And also I find that um, that whole idea of what we were talking about earlier about serving and finding every, a way for you to contribute to this world in every possible way you can, that also goes down to even smaller acts of kindness every single day. So always asking yourself, well, how can I, how can I be a better human being today? You know, you're following your dreams, you're working hard, but like in that moment right now, whether that is helping, you know, an animal in need when you see one, or maybe opening a door for an elderly person, like just those tiny little small acts of compassion and kindness, which allow you to connect deeper to this, um, like Mark was saying, the collective all, like the oneness that we all share as human beings. It's also very, um, humbling practice to do every single day because it just allows you to remember that all of us no matter what our differences are and what our perspectives of the world are we're all just still these energies and human forms all going through our own experiences and suffering and finding beautiful things to be grateful for all intertwined in one until we we leave the body with a knowledge of something that we learned while we were here and so thinking about that and also always thinking about how you can serve in small ways and big ways is something very important. I think that you mentioned the humbling thing. I think that's mm -hmm. really important is because to understand that it's okay to not know and it's okay mm -hmm. to always, to not just question everything, but to accept that there may not be an answer and that maybe you, you come up with an answer, but not to be married to it and live by it, but to also recognize that is in a, in a strange sort of way, 
the freedom of being human is we all get a chance to make what we want out of it and to perceive it the way we choose and to and to to define it how we want and that freedom it's a beautiful thing but sometimes it can be very restricting because it's that unknown that magic that makes it so special and surrendering to to the idea that science might not always be right and the religion might not always be right and then maybe no one knows and maybe it's just magic and it's brilliant it's beautiful we need to just appreciate it because it'll be gone in a flash um it could just be like that polaroid picture that you just mm. saw <laughs> yeah and then that's see like, it again. And that, and believing think, in that right there because you experienced it right no one else did but you mm-hmm. did and that's something beautiful too is when you find those moments of experience like believing it with your heart to be like no this was a gift to me to experience and to notice and to go through and that's and if it is that experience <laughs> then you have to like cherish it yeah. and, and with a deep respect mm-hmm. and a deep like a humbling respect of saying like well this is this is it this is what i get and it's amazing mm-hmm. so i gotta just do my best with it and that's the only way to pay respect, I think, is to just to try your best to understand that, yeah, it's all connected in a way. And we're all one in a way because we all somehow miraculously ended up on this planet in a blink of consciousness at the same time. Like the odds of that alone, like just being born is one thing. But then if that, we're all here, the fact that people find discrepancies with each other is insane because it's like mutual miracles, like spiraling into the universe at the same time. And we're all like, it's amazing. So. I think there's just that, that word humbling when Juliana said it, just, I think that that's like, that might be one of the bigger lessons I think that we've learned through this as well, is that it doesn't have to revolve around us because everything kind of is us. So that means that nothing is us at the same time, which is beautiful. You're getting into Ellen Watts a little bit again. Maybe. So <laughs> yeah, you, you guys are amazing. You're my two favorite uh, enlightened van hippies. You know, <laughs> Dropping deep spiritual wisdom. But you know what's really wonderful? Because a lot of time I'll, I'll interview authors. And I know you guys have done pro- programs and books and different things. But a lot of people will write about it. And when, when I hear them write about it, I'll kind of know where they're at from how they write and experience it. And because you guys are living it, you're, you're sharing so many really deep spiritual lessons that I've heard over interviewing spiritual people for five year, quote unquote, spiritual. Um, you know, one of the ideas of being a spiritual person, I say, is like, you know, number one, just don't be an a-hole. The, the step one. Then number two, just think about what you can give back. But the other thing is interesting that um, Juliana was saying was the best spiritual lesson I've ever heard from any book or ever any individual is, to, is from my Native American elder teacher. And he said, do three kind acts a day, go out of your way to do it, and don't expect anything in return. And when I think about transforming the planet, if I could implement one thing, whether it's a belief, whether it's a thought or an idea, if we did that, it would transform everything because you guys are living your life in a way that's cooperative, but you can't fake it. It's impossible to fake. You know, you, you cannot not fake it. You know, like the universe will smack you some way and it won't be as you know won't be as good but even when you're not faking it it's still challenging it's not all perfect but what you're doing is you're doing it deliberately right you're kind of making the choices that you can working with what comes back and kind of you know it's a yin yang thing it's not always perfect um but at least you're intending to do something positive and you're figuring out how you want to express here and i think that one of you said something that reminded me that life is a gift, but a lot of us aren't treating it that way. You know, myself included, I'll get stuck in my head, right? And everything becomes serious. And I forget to cherish how wonderful and beautiful and amazing it is to be alive. Um, You know, I want to honor your time because I know you're in a van on data. So I'm going to throw a question at you. And if you want to add on or continue, you're more than welcome. I'll sit here and listen. This is lovely. Um, What I wanted to ask was, what do you guys, what can you suggest about comparison And getting out of the, like the ego self of like, you know, needing to be the best or, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of Instagrammers out there and they want to be, you know, super good looking and be the number one yoga person. And you can, there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, But I feel like when we don't have the right intention behind it, it's not going to bring us to where we think we're going to go. And the same, same way when you want to create or even start a business or move out in a way that you want, most people are probably going to tell you it's a bad idea right? But you'll know 
for yourself if it's right. And if you keep comparing to someone, like if you compare your podcast to mine, you know, I have like 400 episodes and, um, you know, years of experience, right? And you might think it's good. You might think it's bad, but it's just me doing it longer. You know, if you compare your YouTube channel to yours and you say, oh, I need to do a podcast and I need to get this many numbers. It needs to make me this much money. It's completely the wrong thinking. And so I'm just curious um, if you can help with people who compare. Because a lot of time too, it's like, it makes them feel deflated and like not good enough. And again, it's wrong thinking. So I know that because you guys have achieved a quote unquote level of success, people will do that. And I actually asked my friend, you guys remind me a little bit of Adam Roa. Do you know who he is? No. He's a spoken word poet. And one of his, uh, he's, he was speaking for Kyle Cease and it blew up and it was on Goalcast. And I think it was like 200 million listens, like something ridiculous. And he's like, oh, and he's like this exact same person before, during, and after, you know what I mean? And so people would perceive him in a whole different way, but he's still just a regular guy trying to be congruent and authentic with himself and master his craft. So I feel like the comparison thing is a, a big challenge for even young kids, but also adults, and they don't want to step out, right? They don't want to be crappy at something at first. Yeah, that's really interesting. We actually, um, when I was meditating yesterday morning, I, I forget how it came to, but I sort of downloaded this this thought, and we talked a lot about it on a hike with our dog yesterday, um, which was literally based around the word comparison. So it's really fascinating that he brought that up. And it was just sort of talking about the idea of how in modern day, especially with the influx of social media being so such like a, a regular and apparent repetitive thing in people's like 14 hour consciousness in the day, like how many times it breaks up their, their usual frequency of consciousness. Um, and, and the fact that most of social media to some degree now um, triggers a mass majority of people into this state of comparison yeah. um, that live, whether it's somebody's meal or somewhere where they went out or a car that they drive or a vacation spot that they're in or um, a YouTube channel that they run or the amount of followers they have or how good they, their teeth look in a certain photo, like literally, uh, a, ma a very and I think it's almost it's almost like a like a, it's almost like a, a like some kind of phenomenon that's overtaken I would say most of society at this point I mean when I was younger it might have used to be like magazines or like billboard ads or something but, but now it's, like, but now it's, it's literally like, like we're, we're yeah. self-voluntarily like projecting these uh, these images that it takes a very certain way to look at to avoid the trap of comparison and I think and it actually affects us too. It affects us too like, because we you catch can't help ourselves, it. Especially on Instagram, like you'll catch yourself kind of like in this rabbit hole going down, people may be doing similar things to you and then you start to compare your quality, your you Whatever know, it is, it could be anything. It could be like, the stupidest things in the world yeah, that don't even but, matter to you, but, but you're funny. still... And, and like the ego takes well, over, and that, right? And that's yeah. sort of, we came to this yeah. conclusion where we talked about, well, that's looking at things through the lens of ego. That's when your ego's in the driver's seat. And so you're, the lens of ego demands comparison. Um, but then there's some people in some moments that we all have, hopefully, that when you look at someone and you, you look at it through a sense of oneness, through, so through a lens of oneness. So it, not necessarily like you're looking at yourself, but like you're looking at another human being. Um, it's egoless. So you feel like deep loving kindness for whatever it might be, whether it be bad or good. You, social media, we have this unfortunate phenomenon that everybody loves to put the best selves out there now which is just like a sickness because no one and then there's also now like the the deflecting to be to get more social likes now sometimes you can kind of try to put your least best self out <laughs> to like trick people into thinking you're not playing that game but you're actually playing because your motives <laughs> the same result but doing a different tactic so it's like there's all kinds of weird shit going on but what i, I it comes down to just the lens that you look at things with and, and being so and self-awareness and I think we talk a lot on our channel and our socials about the ability to master self-awareness because um, if you can't step outside of yourself in sort of like an Eckhart Tolle way to understand the root of your thoughts um, and the lens that you're looking at things with then you're just living in a dream you're like living an unconscious life and it's usually driven by ego like I said through that through that lens mm -hmm. and so like that comparison i think it's a sickness and i don't know i we struggle with it i think everyone struggles with it and it's programmed into us it might be in our nature or it might be it culturally be a, a programmed. Natural human trait yeah too, we right? don't know like, but but fighting it that's the fun part and recognizing it and then trying new strategies to try to 
to try to ground yourself when you see it happening, I think is very important. And I think what Mark was saying, awareness is probably one of the biggest tools you can use in that moment is just trying to be aware when you fall into that rabbit hole you know, of being comparative to other people and then stepping away from it. And it's really hard to find that point well, of yeah. awareness. But the more you practice it, the easier it will become. And also when you do catch yourself in that state of mind, comparing yourself, remove yourself from the situation and redirect the energy to something positive. So, you know, if you're watching let's just say like a youtuber that does the same thing and you think oh they're better than me and you're comparing why don't i get that result yeah why not getting the views or the likes this person is stopping the video and and putting something positive or inspiring or something that uplifts your soul and your heart that inspires and motivates you to continue to perfect your craft to a new level it's almost like you're redirecting that energy so instead of just turning it off and sitting and brooding in it (laughs) thinking about it again it's like distract yourself and position yourself to a different way so it's just finding tactics and strategies i don't think there's an answer to be like this is what you do don't compare yourself because it's it's easy to say like of course like you're on your own path and that's what you always have to remember we're each of us are on our own path and we're going to succeed and fail in many different things and that's just makes us who we are but it's really difficult as human beings especially in this digital world seeing everyone else trying to do and succeed in similar or different ways but it's the, it will be the death of your art and that's yeah. the sad part is that comparison is the knife that you will end up stabbing in your own heart if you if you don't get control of it and it will it will drive people to the grave meaning like you know the musician at the guitar store who's just bitter and angry because he spent his time as a teenager in a band comparing his band to everyone else and that comparison held his art back from flourishing because art can only flourish in, in positive like in a positive environment in in like it comes you have to tap into a greater source and I truly believe creativity comes from somewhere else no one knows and can put words to it but in order to access the dog. <laughs> he's so funny. Why are we getting here? He's just taking water. Um, but in order in order to like to create good art or art at all and, and tap into that thing in you and, and that source, like comparison can have no role in that. Like There's the no motive has to be pure of, mm-hmm. of doing it for the reason you're doing it. Um, and and so it's a do or die. Like you cannot you cannot succeed. You can succeed I mean, there's, a, there's a, obviously there's certain stories, for, I think, for every rule, if you try to come up with it. I would like to say that you can't succeed if you use comparison as your driving force. I'm sure there's lots of people who have. But then the question is, to what level of success? Could they have been 10 times more successful? And how do you define that success? Is it just by numbers of Instagram followers? Or if you're endlessly comparing yourself to things, it's an endless hole. There's always going to be someone bigger, more successful with something else you don't have. That's what the ego loves. That's why the ego is an endless abyss. Because no matter what level you get to, you can always be like, well, why? You know, you could be playing Batman in a movie as an actor and you'd be like, well, why is that guy playing Captain America who's a better superhero? Like, or whatever. Like, there's nonsense crap like that. Like, because there's always someone that you can always find something, your ego can always find you. It's a tricky little guy. Like, the ego will always find something to torture you with. We'll always find something to compare to so you have to learn to disarm it and it takes many different strategies mm-hmm. and it takes daily daily discipline it takes like for us we meditate every morning we do yoga every morning we re- we affirm ourselves as as a as individuals and as a team and we also um, trust i think trust is a i think a great example to put to close off what you're trying to say here with all the comparison conversation is trusting your own path and trusting that you are led and coming back to that trust yeah, that you are led to to be where exactly where you need to be in this moment and no matter where anyone else is no matter what their journey is right now you're on your path as long as you continue to follow your heart and as long as you continue to work your ass off every day um and fall back up fall and get back up you know that's 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 what you got to focus that's on. That's your journey. And that's your journey. And, and trust in the process because that trust is that trust in the universe that will continue to guide you to the place where you're meant to be. And just remembering that alone is something that can always help you come back to yourself whenever you feel this ego that yeah. we're talking about take you somewhere else that is not serving your authentic self. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Like 
you are exactly where you need to be. That's funny. It's a line we use a lot yeah. in our in our videos all the time, especially in like yoga videos. We'll always put it in the beginning because it's also a great reminder for people, you know, when they're practicing yoga. Because I've seen it in physical pra- like classes, but also hearing it from people's comments online, people always want to compare themselves, whether it's to me as a teacher or to the next person next to them in the yoga class. And it's like that ego again, it's like, well, they're doing a better downward dog than I am. And so it's like, they're How ridiculous. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's true. We all go through it. But we all go through it because you want to be that most flexible person in the class and having that small reminder for people in the beginning of their practice to remember that you are exactly where you need to be. So whether as you can't even touch your toes today or whether you're completely down in your practice and your heads and your knees or whatever it is, that is where you need to be in that That's moment. where your journey has brought mm-hmm. you and that's where if you accept your journey will begin again from. And you take that example from a yoga class on a mat and you take it off a mat to your life, to everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Like that. Amazing. Well, I, I really love the perspective. I think there's a lot of gold in there. And when you guys were talking, one idea that I was reminded of, of something I learned in Law of Attraction, it's like, you know, comparison is something that the, the mind does. We compare things like, because it, we, it's part of survival. We, we judge how fast the car is going. You know, we judge if the, something is dangerous or safe. So the mind's going to automatically judge. The idea is not to get stuck in the judgment. And if you're doing it from a comparison perspective, let's say I look at you and you got this sweet yoga pose and I can't do any of that, right? I want to get a handstand. So rather than um, feeling jealous, think about like celebrate that other person's success. We're always looking at the end result, you know? And so if we're looking at all these things and we see somebody fit, celebrate that person, celebrate, you know, the, the possibility that that person got a million YouTube subscribers. It means that it's possible for you. It's showing the level of excellence and like, Wim Hof, for example, nobody thought that humans could do what he could do. And he's showing other humans how to do that, to sit in cold and, you know, control their body and do all these amazing things. So if we can look at what people are doing and celebrate them rather than being crab in the bucket, because if you're a crab in the bucket, you're going to stay in the bucket and everybody outside the bucket, they're going to be holding their hands down, trying to help you because Mm -hmm. that's the mentality that got them there. They understand it was a process. It was a surrender. It was work ethic. It was integrity. You know, there is no other way to it, right? And you can achieve success in, in let's say, a financial or even, you know, because I work with a lot of athletes, right? You can be super successful, miserable. You can still follow the process, but you can do it a whole different way. You'd be successful and happy. Um, and so how many different ways do you measure success? You know, do you have a good family? What do you value most? It's like, oh, I value making all the money. And so I never at home and I never watch my kids getting raised and uh, we have this big empty house. Well, is that success really? Or you could have the big house and all those other things, but you have to really prioritize what's most important to you because um, you guys keep coming back to something that's awesome. And it's just like, uh, you know, trusting the path in your daily practice, you know, every day affirming what it is that you want to do, making sure that you're on track, making sure that it lines up, you're, you're reflecting because um, there's an old Zen saying that's something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, you know, basically live today as if it's your last. So we were talking about the year, but we really only have a day, right? And if we can master that day each day over time, it's really going to change the trajectory of our life. And if you do it and get to a level of mastery, which would, which you guys are at because you've achieved quote unquote success. People can see it's from the process. It's from Mm -hmm. doing that process over and over and over and over and over again. There is no other way. If you were to teach people how to do it, you'd be like, okay, this is the thing that you want to do. Here are some tips and tricks and you got to go commit and you're going to figure out all these things and you're going to get obstacles. But if you're truly committed, you're going to figure it out and the universe will support you because that's just how this stuff works. So, um, I wanted to ask, um, honor your time again, because you're in the van, but if you want to add on to something, please, I'll sit here and listen. It's very lovely. Um, but is there anything that you guys wish that I'd asked or that you want to talk about before we close it up and you, I don't know what you, what you guys do, go find a shower, go jump in the bush, do something. <laughs> um, I really like you talking about celebrating other people's success. I think that's that lens of loving kindness that we were talking about yesterday. We were actually talking about it yesterday, um, just looking at 
from the people that we have in our circles, like our friends. Like you have friends that you know are truly in their hearts are so happy to see you succeed. And you have some other friends or acquaintances that you know that there's something in them that they're almost like wanting you to fail because of that comparison that we were talking about, or them comparing their life and their path to yours. So um, when we witness people's characteristics of being that, what Mark was saying, living from that oneness, um, always making sure that we do the same for others, you know, celebrating other people's mm -hmm. success and not letting the ego come and uh, take control of our hearts and of our minds. Yeah, it's, so, it's really, yeah. and I like that, the celebration idea of it. I think that's yeah. really special. I think not enough people recognize that there there's self-serving value in celebrating other people too, because then you're able to celebrate with them. And like you said, then people will more likely mm -hmm. see that kind of positive energy and want to help you. But I think beyond that, and much as the precursor to that, is just the idea of embracing, embracing that possibility. You know, yeah. that is that is possible. Anything is possible. I think that's what's amazing about this day and age is that if you want it, you can, you know, you can choose anything. You know, it goes back to the beginning. You could like. I don't know, I remember somebody talking about, like, if you love Pokemon, if you just are, that's your heart and soul is Pokemon, like, start making Pokemon content, and eventually you'll be able to pay your bills making Pokemon, like, because there's an audience for that everywhere, and there's a way now to tap into it. There's a niche the, for everything. The key holders have been eradicated, like, there's a key copier to all of the access of everyone's dreams now. You used to have to, like, get huge television networks to approve your things and get, like, and people that held those kinds of doors and held everyone at bay so you, you stayed who you were, but now all the tools are there and it's a fascinating beautiful time whatever it is you can do and it's all possible because other people are doing it and if you celebrate other people doing it that's that's the that's the golden ticket because yeah. that means you can do it too allow that to be the inspiration for it's yourself proof. and the proof that if others can do it so can you mm -hmm. and i think that's how i think that was a huge part of what, how we did it too because we just saw people doing it we're like well they're doing it they're making videos, they're traveling around the world, they're like experiencing more than we are. How do we do that? But in a way that serves to a greater cause, to a greater being than us, way, in our own way. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's fascinating. I think the celebrating thing, I just I guess I wanted to comment on what you said. As yeah, and there's thing. an abundance mindset to that too, right? Because in the fear side, there's not enough, right? If you guys are doing the YouTube videos, I can't do the YouTube videos because now we're in competition. But on the other side, from the lens of love and compassion and oneness, we realize that there is more than enough for everyone. And the universe, we're in an abundant universe, it's going to find your own unique path. And you're going to you're going to create that but you have to be an in integrity to find that and create that. That's the thing that's up to you. And if you're in crab in the bucket, idea and mentality or fear mentality or hating everybody it's not going to happen you, you have to line up your own way i love it i love it and i think maybe that's the biggest lesson for people because i think there's a mentality it's like a it's like a disease mentality that like the, is enough. that that crab mm -hmm. mentality and yeah the scarcity and the fact that like other people are so i can't like that's crazy and I don't know where it came from or why it becomes a part of who we are other than just the, the fear-based anxiety that we, of this energy of this culture we live in, but it's, it's a, it's a false narrative. Like everything is possible more than ever before in human history. And like anything is possible. And as long as you can accept that as your, as your beginning block, you can build anything from it. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to truly believe it. And I don't know. It's, it's beautiful. I don't know. This has been great. Thank you so much. This has been really great. What a wonder, what a wonderful little discussion we've had. Yeah. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. This has been awesome. This is great. Yeah. Um, well, you guys, yeah, you're, you're amazing. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this episode because your life experience is, is literally an expression of all these simple spiritual lessons that, that are out there, but they're integrated. Like you said, they're simple, but sometimes hard to do. You know what yeah. I mean? It's hard to stay in our integrity. It's hard to figure out what we want and then like do that first thing, right? You have to take the action. And so um, you guys are doing it and living it. And I agree with everything that you said. And um, you're a great example of, of, of being an in integrity and then just watching the result and then being able to articulate it. So I wish you all the best, all the success. Uh, keep getting the good vibes out there. Um, where can people find more about you? Your videos are out there. What do you... Where do they go? Uh, well, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Boho Beautiful. Um, or our website, uh, 
bowbeautiful.life. So mm -hmm. www.bowbeautiful.life. And then we also use your Instagram, and that's bowbeautiful.life, the handle for Instagram. Oh, and if anyone wants to engage with any of our programs, because um, we, we do sell like all kinds, like we have like a retreat program and a physical fitness program and a meditation program and all kinds of stuff on our store. You made a coupon, didn't you? Yeah. What is it? I don't remember what the coupon code is. Well, we could just send it to you afterwards. I'll put it in after. Yeah. Because <laughs> like we recognize there might be new people, so we wanted to yeah. make it easier for them to engage with that sort of side if they were interested. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, amazing. Thank I'll, you. Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah, my pleasure, guys. Well, you know, you're not too far down the road. Hopefully one day we'll, we'll link up in Costa Rica or in the mountains somewhere. But uh, keep up the amazing work and uh, stay in touch. And you just thanks for what you guys are doing for the world. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Peace, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.